morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's live edition of Mafia Roundtable with Dominic Sicali. I want to thank our sponsor, EG Vodka. Please go to egvodka.com, order your vodka. We're working on getting everything shipped in 44 states. Once we have that worked out, it'll be on EG Vodka's EG. You can go to egvodka.com. You'll see all the states that we could ship to. Uh, there'll be a shopping cart. We're getting together the owners of the company. We're going to discuss some type of subscription program for the subscriber base where we're going to be given discounted rates anywhere from six to 12 month subscriptions. Get a bottle a month. If you want more, you get more. We'll give a better rate. Um, but this is an excellent vodka, folks. Really, really good. We have three flavors. We have the sage. We have, um, which is an Earl Grey. Great with an espresso martini. Unbelievable. It complements the espresso. Tones down the bitterness. Really good. Then we have the rosemary lavender mixed with lemonade. It's like you're drinking lemonade. You don't even taste it. And then we have the plain. And I drink it. Just chill it with ice. It's not even, you won't even know you're drinking an 80 proof vodka. We're 100% organic, gluten free. And our vodka is made from wheat. We import the wheat from Italy. I mean, really, really good vodka. You have to try it. If it wasn't good, I would not be endorsing it. I would have not got involved with the company. So, with that, go to egvodka.com, place your orders. And uh, we'll have a subscription base where you could sign up and have, have a drop ship every month. Also, go to alwayslitcigars.com. Hand-rolled cigars. You'll like them. Uh, good cigar, good quality, reasonable price. And they're part of the Sakali family, and it's part of our organization. Uh, we have a lot more things coming out. I have the protein powder that will be coming out. Syndicate will have four different levels of the protein from uh, beginners to super advanced. Each formula will um, fit the needs of the type of workout you're doing. If you're super advanced, it's going to have a high concentrate of all the aminos and all the nutrients that somebody who's an advanced bodybuilder needs. The beginning phase will accommodate for the beginners. And then also the workouts I have, starting with cracking the shell for the beginners and even cracking the shell I use going back to working out again, where the next day you feel a little tenderness, it feels good, doesn't discourage you. A lot of times people, they want to go in the gym, lift the gym, do too much, that the next day they can't walk, can't lift their arms, gets them discouraged, and that's it. They don't go back in the gym. So I formulated a plan, workouts throughout my years and years and years, being incarcerated. We'll have that coming out. We'll have workout videos coming out. I have a medical platform coming out. I'll give you the website soon. Everything will be linked in. You go to that website. Uh, there'll be a doctor there where we do blood work, check your levels, whatever you're deficient in, uh, tell you what supplements are needed, and everything coincides with working out, staying healthy, staying in shape. So with that, we have a lot of good content coming out. So folks, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. We're at, I just checked, 15,700 and I think 11 subscribers. Unbelievable for four months. I want to thank everybody. I'm really humbled. And we cracked a million views, I think, three or four days ago. Thank you so much. I couldn't have did it without everybody out there, all the support, even the haters. Keep it coming. Keep the messages coming. I'm okay with it. I'll take it head on. And I don't back away from anything. Never Dominic Sicali. Go at things straight forward. Now, <clears throat> today's topic. First, I'll start off with Sammy the Bull. Love the guy. Great guy. Solid relationship with the guy. And, um, you know, I know things are going on on the internet. There's some issues. But... His issues aren't my issues, just like the mafia. This is the mafia. 
We are still mafia. The only difference is we don't do things illegal anymore. I know I don't do things illegal anymore. That's why I created the Sakali Family Inc. Number one rule, no illegal activity. Because I utilized the tradition of the mafia. Because there was a lot of legitimate businesses in the mafia. A lot of legit. The way we work, organized, was strong, was structured. And that's what I implemented back without illegal activity. So it's 100% legit. Now, I even have businessmen involved, um, attorneys involved. Everything will be announced, even today. My underboss and I were making another person, a captain, uh, was strengthening the group, the organization. And it's an organization, it's a safety net, it helps everybody. We utilize our resources uh, to facilitate better opportunities make things easier if somebody wants to open up a restaurant pizzeria nightclub we have all the connections from liquor to credit card processing to bar supplies napkins straws cups paper bags we have it all it's all part of the cali family even if you want to go take a trip rent the learjet we have an owner of a Learjet company. They have, I think, seven jets, all part of the Sakali family, Inc. And that's that's what it's about, the organization where we work together and build. So when I'm, I'll get back to the story, and this is part of it. In the, and I'm a boss. I'm a boss. Michael Franchet said it best. Even when I was in the life, I was a captain. Technically, we are a boss. We have a crew of guys underneath us that... They answer to us. We dictate to them. Uh, And at the end of my tenure with the Bonanno crime family, I was second in command to Michael Nose after Vinny Basciano got arrested. And then when Vinny Basciano green-lighted me taking out Michael Nose, I had the top position. When they green-lighted me to make Louis Electric a captain, if Michael didn't take the message, and I did, Louis Electric became an official captain. I elevated him. So I had that top spot. And what a boss has to do at times, hear everybody out. Not everybody's always going to get along. But I'm not going to be dictated by all the negative comments I get. Hey, why are you talking to this guy? Why are you talking to that guy? Why are you talking to that guy? They didn't do anything wrong to me. Even Lee Cole and James Proctor. They came at me hard, made a lot of innuendos, a lot of false statements in the beginning. And you know what? I saw their show. They grew. They changed their platform. They were being more accurate with things they were saying. They were being, they don't like rats. Cool. They don't like informants. Cool. They don't like cooperators. Cool. But now they seem to respect the issues, respect the people. So with that, I felt they deserve a second chance. Let me go on the show. We'll talk about what you said. I'll clarify. And that's what I did. So as long as people come out with they're okay, we could agree to disagree. You might not like what I did in the past. You might not like what I did, period. But as long as you respect and you listen, I'm okay with that. Everybody, I'm not going to please everybody in life. So just like this Mafia John who's ever beefing, it's not my beef. I will never talk, get involved. If two former made members are going at it and I'm with one of them, I'm not going to talk about the other one and vice versa. It's not me. I'm not that little bitch in the middle to wah, 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 wah. Not happening. Not happening. Can't have it. Can't have that conversation. Something You want to say something? Let's get the other guy together and we'll say something. But other than that, I don't do that. Sammy's my dear, dear friend. Love him. Great guy. We'll support him. Be behind him, whatever he needs. And I hope he would be there for me in the same aspect. Michael Scars, Mikey Scars, DiLonardo. We sat through James Proctor. He set it up. Um, and I'm always open to meet a fellow mobster, especially somebody like Michael, who is a captain in the Gambino crime family, heard a lot of good things about him. Heard some bad things about him, too. But never did anything wrong to me. Seems like a great guy. Sat down with him the other night with the wives. Oh, my God. It's like we knew each other forever. 
just talking about the things in the life and this. And I told him straight off the bat, I'm very close with Sammy. Dom, I know that. Well said. That's it. I'm not here for that. I'm here to meet you. We spoke, had a great time, hit it off. The synergy was through the roof. And like I said, it was like we never even knew. It was like we knew each other forever. So <clears throat> we have a few things we talked about in the works, looking to get together again. You know, if we don't do anything, we don't do anything. But we want to build a friendship first. And it takes time. But we hit it off. Wives hit it off. Wife is unbelievable, beautiful woman. Uh, got along with my wife. I mean, really, really nice time. I'm impressed. He's a classy, classy guy. Um, and usually I'm quick picking up the checks. Uh, I actually excuse myself to go to the bathroom, and that's usually where I'll get the check on the side. This motherfucker beat me to it. He actually followed me, and I say motherfucker out of love. Um, he followed me to the bathroom. He said he had to go to, so I couldn't even make my move. Then all of a sudden... We're at the table. She throws the bill with a credit card. He already beat me. So he probably did it as soon as he got in. Classy guy. And then we go upstairs to get some drinks, smoke a cigar, and right away, throwing money. I mean, quick, quick. Uh, I told him, next time, I'm picking it up. And if you think you're slick, we're fighting. We're fighting. And I said, I'm going to go back to my old ways. I know you see I'm bigger than you. Younger, but I'm going to sucker punch you. He started laughing, you know. It was all good, but great, great guy. We had a lot, a lot of laughs, a lot of synergies. So, you know, it's just nice. Even when I sat down with Michael Franchise, I mean, wonderful guy. And I told him, Michael, I could learn a lot from you. You're older than me. You're just different eras. And it's just about learning, growing, uh, respecting. And there's times I, I don't agree. With stuff he says, you might not agree with stuff I say, but it's just all about respecting and respecting everybody's opinion. And then we have the Lee Cole, Jane Proctors of the world, where, you know what? Getting people, don't speak to them, they're this, they're that. Lee has the reputation of flipping and flopping, backstabbing. But you know what? Everybody deserves a second chance. It looks like he's rebuilding himself, rebranding. <laughs> Seems like a great guy. I'm going to help him out with his workout, sponsorships, everything. And that's it. He didn't do anything wrong to me. So other than they made some misstatements, they corrected it. We went on the show, corrected some things, and that's it. And I even tell Lee, you know, there might be future interviews. Come at me hard. Don't hold back. Don't be afraid. I want it. As long as you're accurate and not talking stupid, ridiculous, Come at me hard. Come at me. And I'll take it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm going to battle you a thousand and ten percent. So we have that understanding too. But I'm not going to be dictated by anybody out there. Any of the followers. Like one person said, hey, did Sammy give you the okay? This is Dominic Sicali. I'm my own boss. I have my own mafia family. The Sicali Family Inc. I was my own person out there. On the street. Now, with my own mafia family, 100% legit. We do things right. And no, Maddie, you're not the boss, Maddie. She's pointing, I'm the boss, I'm the boss. She is. Uh, 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 not to hear her. So, yes, dear. Yes, dear. I do one of those things. Back in the day, there was the Yogi Bear. And the guy's reading the paper. Yogi's running around. They're at a campsite. The guy's reading the paper. The wife has the pies out. Honey, honey, this bitch. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. That's what I do. Um, <laughs> anyway, back uh, to... I'm not going to have anybody dictate to me or tell me BS. And I'm hearing it from everybody. So I don't need anybody's permission to do anything in life. I do what I feel is right. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed. I'm my own person, my own individual. And even in the the mafia, even in the day, there's guys that didn't like each other, even in my crew. So because you don't like so-and-so, I'll give this example. Gino Gillespie didn't like Joe Torre. They called each other rats. Well, Dom, you should know that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I treat everybody different. Whatever beef you have, number one, don't come out of your mouth like that to me because that could get you killed. Saying a rat is a dangerous thing. Do not do that. 
Unless you have proof, you show me. Then it's a different story. And if we find the proof, I'll take them out. And that's it. But, um, you know, you have that in life. Just because somebody's not talking to somebody else doesn't make me hate them or me not talk to them. No, I'm different. Because what happens is, at the end of the day, they make up. And then who's left out? The person, somebody like me. So that's never going to happen. I've been in the life too long. I know the life inside and out, upside down, every which way. So I'm doing what I want to do. So you can keep on commenting, people. Don't do this. Don't do that. I'm going to do what I feel is right. Until I'm wronged, then it's a different story. Then I have my own beef, and it's with Dominic Sicali. Let me tell you, uh, I'm in contact with Gene Borello. He has a lot of, uh, and I love Gene, I love the attitude, I love his straightforwardness, his toughness, dug through and through, but he's going to listen to me, so, and if he doesn't, Gene could go about his business, and I love him, I love him, we communicate back and forth all the time, and like he said, Dom, do you realize the Bananos were a killing family? All the bodies and everything, one of the only families. I know, Gene, but we're not there anymore. So you have to evolve. You have to change your ways. You have to tone it down. You owe a few people apologies. And I'll have that talk with him when uh, he does get out. Uh, he said something, he'll do the interview. If he wants to go with A-Light, A-Light's my friend. I'm okay if A-Light wants to come here on the show. He's welcome. Open door policy. You know, I love A-Light too. Great guy. Whatever issues he has, he has. Those are his issues. Those aren't my issues. He's my friend. Never did anything wrong to me. So, you know, and you know what? We have con controversy. If he's on the show, I, I say something that's inaccurate. So we did time in jail. He could call me out on it. I'm okay. Or I might say, oh, shit. You know what, John? You're right. And I'll do the same to him. If he tells me something, I don't, but John, come on. You're full of shit. And I'll tell him. That's healthy. But we're doing it to each other's face. We're going back and forth. I'm not talking behind his back, and I won't do it. You know, he's my friend. So, you know, we have a lot of good content we could put out there. So now I'm also going to go into one of the real mafias. And it's sad. I am sick and tired hearing with this transgender and I'm going to tell you, I've been around, I am 10 to 20 steps ahead. I see behind the scenes, I see motivation, what's motivating people. Again, who pops up in Dominic Sicali's head? Big Pharma. Big Pharma. James Proctor did some research for me. I don't have the paperwork because I've been busy. I didn't get it. But he threw some numbers at me. I asked him, James, do me a favor. Could you pull up? To see what big farmers making. And I could be mistaken, but the numbers were close to $3 billion a year in hormone drugs, whatever pills for the transgender. Then what ticked me off is the fact I heard there's legislation coming out in California where if your child now they're saying a the child, so I'm assuming anywhere 13 to 16 years old, considered a child still, maybe even younger, but say 13 to 16 years old. If your child comes to you and they want to be transgender and you discourage them, you could have you could be charged with child abuse and have your children taken away. Are you fucking kidding me? Even if it's a 16-year-old. But it's funny. I'll give you an analogy. A 16-year-old goes with a 19-year-old. A 16-year-old girl goes with a 19-year-old guy. What happens? What happens? The guy's going to be charged with rape. But it was that 16-year-old's decision. So you're going to say a 16-year-old can't make a decision to go with an 18-year-old, say. A 19-year-old can't make that decision. My day was accepted. But this day and age, that kid could be arrested for rape. Yet, that kid could make a decision to be a transgender? Are you people out of your fucking mind? Who's behind this? Who's behind it? I'll tell you who's behind it. The lobbyists and the politicians. Why? 
Big Pharma funds them. Big Pharma funds them. Are you kidding me? And I'm going to give you a scenario. There was three kids since I've been home, ranging anywhere from 10 to, I think, 13 years old. The girls said, I like girls. And the guy actually dressed like a girl. That everybody said, okay, he's definitely going to be gay. And do you know now, years later, five years later, the girls love the boys. And that young kid who dressed like a girl loves girls. He's a kid. He's a man. Young man. Kids are they're just growing. They don't know. How the fuck could you give a child the choice and tell the parent... We're going to take, charge you with child abuse. Are you out of your mind, people? And I'm going to go even deeper with Big Pharma. Just like ketamine back in the day, in the 50s. All of a sudden, ketamine came out for the manic depressants, the suicides. They see, they have tunnel vision. When you have suicide, you have tunnel vision. All you hear and see, I have to kill myself, I have to kill myself. There's no way out, there's no way out. Ketamine... Spends properly, used properly under medical supervision. What it does, it opens up your mind. So now you have that, the suicide person, the manic depressant, they just see, I have no way out, I have no way, I have to kill myself. That's it, that's all they see, folks. They're like this, we're blinders. What it does when you take that hallucinogenic under doctor's supervision, it opens up the pathways in the mind. Now that person who's suicide, who's like this, it opens up. You see different pathways. You see alternatives. You see, it's not the end of the world. I don't have to kill myself. There's other alternatives. It does open up your mind. But what happened back in the day? Big Pharma was threatened. They saw a decline in their antidepressant drugs. So, of course, they protested. And ketamine became illegal. That was only used for cat tranquilizers. And then we heard a special K. It hits the illegal market. But nowadays it's back. It's back. I did a ketamine treatment. And it just op- it does open up your mind. It expands. And my thing is always about business. I When I went under, first thing that hit, business, business, business. Dom, always put out, numbers don't lie, numbers don't lie. When you're talking to somebody about a new company, new business, hit them with the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Have your facts, your numbers. So it opens up your mind in a lot of different ways. Definitely does, and now it's legal. Again, now we're going to COVID. They come out with a vaccine. Pushing the vaccine, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. Big Pharma, they don't know. How the hell can you tell me after a few months, six months, you don't know the side effects, but you're pushing it out there. Of course they're pushing it out there. Fucking billions of dollars. And people go in, took the shot. I have a lot of friends. I'm in the medical field as well. A lot of doctors. And they see a lot of common denominators with health problems heart attacks, heart issues, other issues with men, women's health. And they're like, Dom, there's a rise. Few different doctors tell me, Dom, there's a big rise. And you know what the common denominator is? Everybody I'm seeing with this rise, they got vaccinated. Who pushed it? Big Pharma. It's a disgrace, people. It's a disgrace. So back to the transgender it's big farmer and that money, they want to make that $3 billion a year, especially from kids. Now it goes up. How the hell are you going to tell me a 16-year-old has the right to make a decision? And I'm using 16. They're going 13, 12, 11, 10. You're going to take the right from a parent? Yet they 16-year-old can't vote. 16-year-old can't get alcohol. 16-year-old can't even buy cigarettes. But they have the right to say... I want to be a man or I want to be a woman and you have to oblige them. They have to start on hormone. Are you fucking out of your mind? Again, put a stop to this. We're here. This is what this platform is going to be about. 
And I'm going to have more people on it talking about it. I'm here for the people. I'll be the people's voice. I don't give a shit who comes at me. We have our facts. And again, I see 10, 20 feet ahead. So with all that, they're the true mafia. And this shit has to stop. Definitely has to stop. So with that, I think we'll be ready to take on questions, answers. Please hit the subscribe button too. I want to hit that 16,000 mark. And I'm humbled by all the love and support. See, one person we have? No, you you also had another milestone this week. Oh, what was that? One million. Yeah, Yeah, I said that. All right, say it again. We have one million views. I think it was three or four days ago. Thank you. A million views. And I only have, I think, 70 things out there. I think we put out two two pieces a week. A million views in four months. Folks, I, I'm just Woo! blessed. You scared me. <laughs> oh, yo, shit, get the, get the gun. Where is it? Oh, those days are over with. No more gun. I can't even use the gun I had on my arm. So, but... um. Million views, thank you everybody. It's just humbling, humbling, humbling. So now let's go for two million views. Let's see if we can get that a lot quicker. But thank you again. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and let's go. Hit him. Hit All right. Me. So this is uh, this was the first uh, contribution question from Ryan Brown. It's thank dumb. you, Ryan, for the contribution. Dom, I admire you for what you said in the video earlier. This was an issue. There was an issue between. Two of my friends. I made one friend's issue my issue. He said, "Ryan, issues is this it, Ryan. My issue isn't your issue. Stop it." And you know something, Ryan. The best. This was from Ryan, correct? Yeah. The best part: two friends have an issue. They make up. You're the bad guy. Then you're the bad guy because you got involved. You took sides, and it makes you the bad guy. And I've seen that happen many times in life, many times. So stay neutral. Don't worry about it. They'll get over it. And when they do get over it, they'll respect you more that you stay, you remain neutral. All right. This is uh, another contribution. We'll get through those because we're... Okay, please. Thank you for the... Who sent it? This is uh, Michael Singal. Thank you, Mike, for the contribution. Uh, Dom, did you know Anthony Franciconi? He was under Patty. Uh, Patty D. Filippo, the name sounds familiar. I think I did, yes, but not, uh, wasn't much interaction. Just hello, goodbye, how are you? Um, sorry about that, but that was it. Um, all right, here's another contribution from Bill Cutolo. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate uh, it, buddy. Cutolo, sorry. It's, it's, that's early. That's all right. For me. Uh, my, my dues, my brother. Love the show and everything you're doing. My full support, 100. See you soon, Bill. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate the contribution. And yes, we'll definitely run into each other soon. I've just been really swamped with stuff. Um, so thank you again. Uh, here's another contribution from Ryan Brown. Thanks, okay. Ryan, once again. Uh, it says, I can vividly remember both of those friends saved me one night from being stupid and possibly catching an assault charge, all because I have a temper. Ah, temper, yes. <laughs> Back in my day, woo! Temper, I'm swinging first. When Dominic would yell, you're calm, you're all right. When Dominic stays quiet, that's when you have to watch out. And there was times I'd be like, all right, all right, you're right, boom, I'm swinging. But those days are over with. But yes, you, you know, a lot, of, a lot, a lot, a lot of fights where uh, it's just amazing. Especially nowadays, you have to be careful. It's not about fighting anymore, getting too old, too brittle. So, but good move not to uh, engage. Okay, uh, this is from Kobe Baller. Another uh, another contribution. Thank you, Kobe. Appreciate it. Uh, it's more of a comment. It says, "I appreciate you being live, uh, spitting those facts, bro." So that was a. Uh, Thank you, Kobe. Always, always, and I'm hitting topics. Trust me. I've asked people to come on to talk. No, no, no. We, you know, that's. You know what? I'm good with that. I'm good with that. It's not for everybody. But you know what? I'm going to hit topics. You're going to appreciate the show. And like I said, we're going to try to do something. I want to do it seven days a week. So I'm hitting current affairs, talking about the mafia, what I see, what I feel, and educate people out there. People like, uh, and again, Megyn Kelly. Uh, even Megyn Kelly, sexual harassment. Come on. I got some stuff will blow you away. Will blow you away. And who's the other guy um, who just got...
came from Fox. Guys, hello. Who's the other guy? Tucker. Tucker Carlson. Tucker. Another guy. Come on. I got stuff. You want to hear it? I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. You want to make America aware of stuff? I'll run it by you. Your hail spin. You'll look like Don King. It'll go straight up with the stuff I know. So come on. Reach out. Let's do something. All right. So this is from Christopher. He was one of the first questions. Uh, and it's more of an ask of you. It says, uh, Yo, cuz, love from Trenton, New Jersey. Wrote a script in jail. Almost finished. And he wants Dom to play the imprisoned mom boss who makes the main character. And they take the newly formed commission. I got a hit here. I he, got. He says he's got a hit here. He wants okay. you. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know what? Send it. Um, we could send. S send it to me. Send your information. We'll do an NDA through the lawyers and everything. Let me read it. If I like it, then we have the film crews, everything. We have a lot of access and we could maybe do something together if, if I feel it's good. So uh, just send it and we'll give it a shot. Listen, people don't laugh at your dreams. Your dreams aren't big enough. Go for it, brother. Go for it. All right. This is from Alexander Wilson. Gave a donation. Thank you, Alexander. It says the New York New York Daily News publicized that Vic Amuso's health is failing, and he's trying to get a compens compensation release. Compassionate, compassionate, compassionate release. release. I'm sorry. He's 89. Should he be granted it? Um, that's a tough one. I would. What I would do if I was the judge, I would take him to an outside facility. Have him diagnose, check his ailments, check his history. More than likely at 89, see his capacity, let him go through the testing. And I feel the guy did enough time, he should be out. However, I would put him under strict supervision. One communication, one correspondent that he's running the crime family, he's back in. But I would definitely give him that shot. I would definitely do it. The guy did a ton of years. And, um, you know, it is what it is. More than likely, he's not going to get it just because how heinous the crimes are, all the bodies. But um, I wish him the best in the family as well. William Morris just gave a donation. Thank you, William. Will the new mafia be international? I'm a Brit with a couple small new hospitality businesses in Romania. Could be good. Mafia branded opportunities here. I'm also planning on starting a Mafia History YouTube channel. Salute. Absolutely. Uh, I have a colleague in the UK, Michael Anderson, dear friend of mine. We're heading out to the UK soon, and he will be straightened out as well. And yes, we are going global. Great connection, great guy. We have, uh, he has a place in Dubai. We have a lot of, lot of synergy. Love the guy. He's family. He's my brother. Uh, yes. From Richard Fernandez, Dom, what's up? Hope all is well. Serious question. I'm from Flushing, Queens. Do you know of anyone that was ever made from Flushing, Queens? Um, I'm sure I did. Uh, just right off the top of my head, no, of course. But uh, I'm sure somebody in the life was made that I knew. Um, off the top of my head, no, I'm not going to give an answer, yes or no. But uh, basically, I just did, yes. But uh, specifically, no. I can't give a specific answer, but thank you for the comment. Just want to let the audience know, Will Masi is Buonasera from Bucharest, Romania. Okay. Questions, guys? Uh, so this is a, a comment uh, from uh, William Morsi. It says, bro, what's that tune that drops when the new mafia writing comes up just before you start? It's banging. Uh, thank you. Thank you. My... Uh, Wilfredo and Joseph, they put that together. Thank you, guys. They took it upon themselves to change the tunes out. And I just, I trust them. So whatever they want to do. I think they even changed the format of the, the screen, right? The, uh, the intro. Yeah, so they just ran with it and go ahead, go. So uh, they're creative. So I have a good, I'm blessed to have a great team. Here's uh, another contribution. It's from Tell the Truth. Thanks, tell the truth. All right, let's hear this one. It says, <laughs> I'm 100% with you on everything you said earlier. About time someone said it. The new mob is the Biden family. <laughs> ah, 
That's but that's illegal. So the Scali family, the Scali family Inc. is legal. So, but uh, wow, no, <laughs> well said. <laughs> Mustach Pete, I appreciate the mental health and substance abuse knowledge. I work in the field, and you are pretty on point. Uh, thank you, thank you. I try to be, and trust me, folks. I can make mistakes. I can be off with certain things. But I try to be accurate. That's the way I was groomed in the life. Uh, because when I was in the life, your words could get somebody killed. So I always prided myself on being accurate when I speak. But there's times I make misstatements. It happens. I'm human. And when I do make the statements, I'll be the first to apologize and recant what I said. So. All right. There's one from Dominic. And he's posting some pretty... Go ahead. Stupid things, mm. but um, here's one. Um, why do you only answer the questions from the ones glorifying rats? He spelled from wrong, so I just okay. <laughs> just enough. Give me the negative, Dom. Whatever you want to yeah. put. Well, he give... actually asks, since okay. why don't you why don't you do a sex change since you're not a man anymore? Oh, okay. That's you understand, but now he's like okay. I don't want to do the sex change because that's not for me. I like my manhood. Uh, my male parts. So that's right. I'm not a man because I ratted. So, but um, it is what it is. So, okay, I answered your question. Um, the rats, though. Why do you only answer the questions um, from the ones glorifying rats? I just answered your question, though. Oh, and you answered the. There, yeah, I told him. I says I like my man part, and I rather keep it hanging instead of tucked in. <laughs> So, but that's the fact. So, you know, I like my man part, so I'm going to keep him. He's my little buddy. He's been there for 56 years. And he's going to stay there for another 50 years. So if you want to tuck yours in, go have yours tucked in. I'm keeping mine. So with that, love you, Don. Keep them coming. All right, Richard Fernandez he made a donation. He wants to know Thank you, top, Richard. top five mobsters of all time. Top five mobsters. No order, just top five. Lucky Luciano. Ah, we'll go Lucky Luciano. I have to say Al Capone. I want to say... I have three out of the same family. So, and I'm going to say them. The Chin. I'll say it when I want to say it. The Chin, Quiet Dom, and Big Ernie. That's my top five. All right, here's another contribution from uh, Joa67. And trust me, I didn't agree the way Chin acted towards the end, but he implemented an excellent policy with his family. They protect each other. So sharp, sharp guy. Very sharp. Uh, this is another contribution. It's just a comment that says, thanks for the entertainment, Dom. And then... Uh, Are you welcome, and thank you for the contribution. <clears throat> Who was it from, the contribution? Joa... Joe, Joe is six, Joe is, seven. Yeah. Joe, thank you. Eight seven nine seven ten seven. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they can't read numbers. So here's a here's a comment for you uh, from the Canadian. It says you passed a message. You didn't have a top spot, Aaron Boy. Yes, I was an Aaron Boy. Everybody's an Aaron Boy in their life. You're right. Even when I had the top spot, I was an Aaron Boy. So I was taking messages, but I acted on those messages. I executed on those Mexicas messages. <laughs> literally, Mexicas. See, e.g. vodka, drink it responsibly <laughs> drunk. <laughs> okay, next, hello. All right, so here, here Let's it go. is. Let's um, go. David uh, Galenti says, Dom, you stand by your truth, and that is commendable, and that I respect. God bless. Thank you, thank you. That's, that's listen. I can make light of everything, even the insults, bring them on. I'm okay with that. But at the end of the day, it's what you have in your heart. I mean, I did so much good since I've been home, and I'm going to do so much more on these platforms. I want to help people. We're going to help everybody out there. Well, not everybody, as much as we could do, I'll do. Um, I just this world is going to shit, and I hate to say it. It's just really, it's disgusting, disgusting. What? Stop. Nothing. Oh. Hey. They're donate. telling me to rush and then I don't get an answer. Donation from Big G484. Thanks, Big G484. And a big donation, too. Thank you. Hi, well, Dom. how much? You could say it. It's not... $49.99. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Much love, brother. Hi, Dom. Your when sister. you go on Bobby Lucy's show? Bobby Luisi. Luisi. Uh, Bobby had the time with. Yes, I did. We were in, I think, Arizona together. Bobby's a character. I love him. Bobby, you could go to him, talk. This guy pissed me off, and Bobby's just neutral, like always laughing, joking, knows his Bible inside and out. Um, wish him the best. We spoke, I think, once about a year ago. And then, uh, you know, I didn't decide to come out, but uh, I think Bobby's a great guy. Another donation from Ryan Brown. Thank you, Ryan. Dom, is your opinion, in your opinion, do you think Tommy Schatz knew Ralph Dawes was an NYPD cop? Or if Joel Waverly told him, do you think he would have had it done? Um, number one, I don't know who that who it is, but I know Waverly and Schatz. And you're talking about have it done, taking them out? Absolutely. Tommy would have definitely taken them out. Without a doubt, Tommy's a thousand percent gangster. I love Tommy when we sat down, many occasions. Great guy, um, you know, really, really good guy, especially boss quality, without a doubt. Next. Uh, this was just a follow-up to the, the contribution. It says, would you go on Bobby's show? That was the question. Oh, would I go on Bobby's show? Yeah, more than likely I would. I would fit it in some way, somehow. We could work something out. Alan Weiser, Dominic, why don't you answer my watch questions? Okay. What question is that? What watch are you wearing today? Guess. Everybody knows. Come on, guys. So it's embarrassing. I'm going to stop wearing watches. All right. This is uh, another okay. co yeah, another Thank contribution. Um, and it says oh, it's from uh, Al Ramon. Why does this guy Hootie keep coming after you? He made another video attacking you, calling you a bozo who never knew the life. Okay, that's good. Um, who's that? Hottie? Hottie, you said? Yeah, hot. It says Hootie. Oh, but... ho oh, Hootie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you said Hottie. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it makes him feel good. He gets his props. Uh, from what I heard, he's not even straightened out. He was on Big Anthony Russo's case at the bottom of the totem pole. And I don't know this for a fact, but I heard he was only looking at four years and he cooperated. So uh, that's irrelevant. So he could say what he wants. He point, puts his flags all over the Bronx. He stepped all over me and Vinny. He was the toughest guy. He was at 30, 40 sit downs. But he was never made, you know, he knows the life inside and now he spits on the floor from, you know, these are things that people tell me. So he could talk, he could publicize, whatever he wants to do, I'm okay with. He's just nobody to me. Next. Richard Fernandez, thanks for the contribution. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. If you could pick any family, any boss to work for. Who and why? And obviously, excluding the boss you already worked for, and what's your favorite mob movie? It would be in the Genovese crime family. Uh, definitely over there. Uh, why I would be there? Just because their structure is so um, elusive. They're so set back where um, they run things properly. Uh, definitely uh, stay there. Um and favorite mob movie, I'm going to give you my top three. Godfather 2, excellent. Um, Goodfellas, and I also like Bronx Tales. So that was, those were good. All right, from Michael Hill. Good morning, Dom, and the people of YouTube. Dom, I was wondering how were the mob families back in your day supposed to support member family members families that were imprisoned like monthly checks to wives you know that's a great question um there is supposed to be money set aside and in my crew they gave me i took over vinnie's crew and then they loaded me up even more <clears throat> i think i had anywhere from 24 to 27 made members in my crew Made members, that's unheard of. Out of those made members, I inherited people that happened to go to jail, 
Um, they got locked up. And out of my pocket, I was sending everybody. It came out to $3,500 a month out of my pocket. Each guy would have $500 in their commissary. Then we had guys like Bruno. That's without Ed and Bruno and Delicato. Vinny and I, Vinny took care of his obligations. They owed money. And then also we would give his family $5,000 a month. Approximately. Five, yeah, it was 5000 a month. And send Bruno, I think, five hundred or a thousand a month in his commissary. So we took care of everybody. Uh, people don't work that way. When I got locked up, the only one who did the right thing, and I'll talk about this, I'll go into it, is the young man who just got convicted of killing his father, Anthony Daz Zatola. Um, he did the right thing by my family. He was given my Son's mother, $5,000 a month. Uh, he sent 50000 for my lawyer or to start. More than my brothers did in the family. You know, including Vinny's son, zero. Guys in Bruno, zero. Which they should be ashamed of. Robert Van Zandt, zero. The only thing he sent when my son was born, a $500 basket. Gee, thanks. Uh, it's just disgusting. I had no support. All the good I did for people, all the money I gave out, zero. I mean, just disgusting. But, you know, you live and learn. But even till this day, I send people money who are in jail. Um, even at one time, my wife is like, why are you sending so much? Because I know how it is. I know how it is. So that's just my heart. And I believe, and I didn't even have the money like that at that time. And I was still doing it. So I believe karma Goes around, comes around. It's easy to give somebody money when you're sitting on two, three million dollars. It's not so easy to give money to somebody when you don't know where your next dollar's coming from. You're just making it. That's when it counts, and that's what I'm known for doing. So, just a comment. Confused fat people. Hey, uh, uh, hey, Dominic. Dominic, men earn money. They don't sit on the internet and all day. So the next time you attempt. To slander Big Dom, make sure you are earning more money than he. Oh, thank I think that's a compliment for me, but thank you. Appreciate it. All right, this is a contribution I from... I hope it's a compliment. <laughs> from uh, Devin Walker. It says, did you thank ever... Thank you, Devin. Appreciate the contribution. Did you have any dealings with the Pepitones? Pepitones. Pepitones? Yes. Uh, Anthony Pepitone, yes. Actually, um... I think Pepitone, we were there as induction ceremony when I, I sponsored Anthony Aiello. And I think Nikki Santoro, if I'm not mistaken, sponsored Anthony Pepitone to get straightened out. So, yes, I was there. I had dealings with him. From I uh, wasn't too close with him, but he seemed like a real nice guy. Young man, kid, guy, man now. Next question. Uh, from New Jersey, Toad. Thanks for the contribution. Thank you, Toad. New Jersey in the house. Uh, I should have you read this. Ketamine yep. forward B W V I A K A Psychosutical. Psychedelical? No, psychosutical. Okay. Uh, developing the first ever tropical psychedelic cream to treat PTSD. Tune in. Awesome channel. Been supporting from the jump. Thank you. And yes, I know the topical creams with the ketamine. Uh, what we have, <clears throat> I'm going to be um, getting involved in opening up ketamine clinics where you go into, and this is part of our medical platform we're coming out, where you go into the facility, a doctor checks you out, weighs you, gives you the proper dosage. It goes intravenous into your system. You're in a dark room, it's a bed, you have music on, it puts you in that uh, state of mind. And then when you come out of it, you relax. It, you could get bags of nutrition while you have the intravenous in. Then we switch over to uh, vitamins, health things to replenish your body while you're coming down, while you're calming. It'll be, it's a relaxed atmosphere. And you walk out of the place feeling like a new person. You have better insight on your life, on your situations going on. So that's what we're going to be creating and putting out there. We already have some locations. I'm not announcing them yet. But we'll put it out there uh, once the medical platform's up and running. So this is a question from Roy Munson. Dom, when you turn CW, were you allowed to keep your money 
or some of your legitimate finances or did you have to give them all up? I had no money. My bro so-called brothers robbed me of everything. So actually, <clears throat> I had one building in my name, signed it over to a Jewish fellow. Mob guys went to his place, trying to scare him. He said, get away, I'm gonna call the uh, FBI. They left him alone. By the time he signed it back to me, they actually, the corrupt, the alleged corrupt uh, chief of police, assistant chief of police, Edouard Delator De from the Bronx, and that's another story I'll come out with, how they covered his ass up. He wound up with all my assets for pennies on the dollar when I offered the bank dollar for dollar what I owed. So they had a fiduciary responsibility to the bank to their shareholders, I was gonna make them whole on the original loans on all my properties. They told me no, where they sold it pennies on the dollar. So they violated the fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders, where they say they took 200,000 from Delator's company, Chang Wang Realty, that he opened. 200,000 when I was offering them, say, a million five, two million. They went for the 200 instead of the two million. So you go tell me, and that story's coming out, how the NYPD internal affairs swept it under the carpet. You tell me, a chair, an assistant chief of police wound up with all my properties. Hmm, that's coming soon too. Uh, this is a contribution from Johnny G. Thank you, Johnny G, appreciate the contribution. Elvin Creek's man, Dom, is Patsy Falsetti a dangerous guy with his own hands? Um, I don't know about that. Um, big boy, big guy, you know, uh, I'm sure he could fight. I've never heard that he's good. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know about that. I'm sure he'll fight. And like I said, at the time when I knew him, he looked like he was in pretty good shape. So, probably so. I know he's not good with his hands, Ralphie Balsamo. <laughs> Wait till you see that story coming out. A fucking punk. All right, from Xavier James, it says, uh, you and Richie uh, Cantrella do an interview. He got a few murders that under his belt that he was uh, talking about in an interview. Would I do an interview with Richie? No, it says, did you and Richie uh, do an interview? No, I never did an interview with Richie Cantarelli. Um, yeah, he does have a few murders, but I think his murders were like he was sitting in the back seat of a car. The guy was in the front and he just popped him. So, uh, I, but he does have a few murders. It's, you know, that's not difficult in the life to do. Next. Um, sorry, they're coming in quickly. Um, Mr. X. Hello, Dom. Did you know David Neal Carvalho? His father is with the Gambinos. Public knowledge is David was transferred to the Bananos. Did you know of him? He is all he also did time and since oh the thing I just lost. Okay, no, just to answer it, I didn't know David, so next. Carrie. Dom, we can't hear your wife. Please have her talk more. That's from Riles. Okay, Riles. See Maddie? Go ahead, go. Let's see it's laughing. Go ahead. I got another one. Thomas Genter. Do you have any stories about the type of gangsters Chin uh, Giante it was? Chin Giante? Ah, spelling. Uh, Giganti, uh, Carrie. Unless they spelt it wrong. Giganti. Anyway, um, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, we did something, and I'll go into that story later, so I'm not going to give all the details. But somebody got baseball batted, and it was the wrong person. They went quick. They saw some of the guys who weren't supposed to be spotted. And they got the crew of guys looking for them real quick. So, uh, you know, Genovese is no joke either. And at that time, the banana was no joke. And it's funny because Gene said, Dom, in one of his texts, do you realize all the bodies with the bananas, like just people being slayed left and right? Not that it's a good thing, but an organized crime, it's, you know, it just helps with the uh, knowing the seriousness 
And with that, you get respect. But um, they were they were formidable opponents, that's for sure. Christopher said, ketamine from the doctor saved my life with PTSD and anxiety. It's a miracle drug. Thank you. Yes, Christopher, definitely, definitely, definitely is. And it really is amazing when it's dispensed properly. Uh, Johnny G said, I heard the Albanians are the strongest group in the Bronx, even more so than the Italians. Is that correct? Uh, not when I was out there. That's for damn sure. Uh, but they had balls. Give it to them. Thousand percent. They had the Lucchese's in check. They tried with the Columbos with Dennis DeLucia. We stopped that because we were close with Dennis. But they abused the shit out of the Lucchese's uh, from the Bronx. They had an uh, altercation, I think, with the Gambinos where uh, somebody pointed a gun, they were at a gas station, somebody pointed a gun at the um, gas pump, saying, I'll shoot the gas pump, it'll blow up, like, just, uh, really, okay, uh, go shoot up a gas pump. But uh, with us, no, we, we weren't taking any shit. Um, I actually uh, fucked one of them up in their own club. And Nikki, I was with Big Nikki. It's like, Dom, why don't you go get your crew? I'm like, no, I don't need a crew. I'm with you. Let's go. Well, I'm fucking up the guy. And I wound up, when I picked up, I even took the bar stool, started hitting him with the bar stool when he was down the guy. And when I swung back, I cracked Nicky in the eye. His, his eye was bleeding. So, um, but no, they respected us. That's for sure. Maybe uh, now it's different. All right. This is just a comment for Christopher, anybody trying to get a hold of you or send you any of the scripts or anything that they can send it to media at mafia Uh, they don't need to put it in the comments. They can send it to the email and we'll make sure that Dom gets it. Um, so anybody who has anything for Dom, uh, media at mafia Yeah, Yes. Send an NDA first because I just like, uh, NDA protects you more so than me. Cause if you're sending me your information, do it properly. Send an NDA, always send an NDA first. So, because you don't want somebody taking your stuff, not saying I would never do that, but just for future, but it's good business. People won't get insulted. And if they do get insulted, then they have bad intentions. Next. Uh, this is a question from Ernest. It says, is your family just for the hospitality industry or are you going to support all types of new businesses, machine shops and other industrial type businesses? Every business we have containers, Actually, I forgot. Somebody said they have a container business. They're looking to integrate with uh, waste management stuff. We have construction companies, land investments, uh, pharmaceuticals, liquor, uh, concrete. We have everything, everything. Leah Jets. Uh, actually, even uh, Mick in the UK, soccer club. So... T-shirts, we have everything. We have access to everything out there. So, no, it's everything. That's what makes us a good organization, a good group. Another thanks to Big G484, 9999 donation. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's greatly appreciated. It says, thanks. Dom, Bobby is a character. Love him and his daughter. Daniela, we were together in middle school and high school. And I played football and she was the cheerleader. I love her a lot. Rest in peace, Daniela. Oh, I didn't know dude, that's Bobby's daughter he's talking about. Yeah. My condolences for that. It's uh, that must be tough uh, losing a child. I can't even imagine that. But um, you know, Bobby is definitely a character. That's for sure. I had a lot of laughs with him. We got aggravated with him a lot of times, but a lot of laughs with him as well. Next, <clears throat> Christopher, were you scared of Ronnie G? He's the most powerful capo in the Benitos. Two days. No, when I was out there with Ronnie G, I was a cop. To me, it doesn't even matter, but I was a cop. I was a soldier. And no, I wasn't scared of Ronnie G. Um, and Gene Barello, I wasn't scared of him either. We were formidable in our own way. We, you know, I took care of my own business. So, and that's it. When you're with men who you know that'll go, it's, um, it's easy. It's not the, uh, there's just a different level of respect. All right, this is a Dom. Would you ever give out advice on starting businesses or multiple businesses since you have experience with that? I think it would be a good way to give back to people who have had bad backgrounds. Yes, definitely. We will. I'm thinking about doing some lectures, some tours. Um, we just have to put it all together. 
Um, I, I would love, and like I said, I want, I'm going to come out with a new channel. I think they locked it up. The three capos where we sit down, former captains. Um, please vote which captains you would like to see with me where we sit down. And then maybe you do tours, talk about businesses, talk about life in the mob, talking about kids, getting them out of the life. And just tell you the treachery about it, just to educate. And I think uh, with the right two by my side, we could have a powerhouse mafia roundtable, the three capos. Uh, this is a contribution from uh, Vintage Mr. J. Thank hey, you, Mr. J. Appreciate it. <clears throat> hey, Dom, I hope you're doing well. What is your opinion on Frank Costello, the way he conducted himself in his business along with his family as the boss? Um, you have to commend them, the old timers. They were just different. They did things differently. Uh, but back then, you didn't have social media. You didn't have the pre You didn't have cameras all over the place. So it was a lot easier to get away with criminal, you know, the underworld uh, stuff. And nowadays, everything's legit. I mean, come on. They took out the daily numbers. They made it legal. They made the lotto they created. Same thing with the sports. They made it legal. So, you know, uh, loans, hard money loans now. So, you know, they took a lot of things off the streets. You just have to evolve, change, and move on with the times. But back then, in those days... It was easy to make money in the streets. Nowadays, it's not, from what I see. Uh, another contribution from Ryan Brown. Thanks, Ryan, again. Appreciate it. Uh, Dom, one of the hits Richie Cantarella did was his own cousin, Tony Mira. Uh, Richie shot Tony in the back of the head. Other cousin, Joe D'Amico, was evolved, involved? Yes, Joey D'Amico. Um, there'll be stories coming out with Joey D'Amico, with his steak knife uh, tantrums. But uh, Vinny loved him, thought he was a great guy. I really never cared for him. Didn't dislike him, didn't like him, just remained neutral. And then uh, he showed his true colors when he was wearing a wire. So, next. Um, I just lost. Okay. All right, we're done? Okay. Um, yeah. Is that it keeps me? Okay, Paul Morgan, where did Frankie Locke sit in the Bronx? He was a legend. Frankie Locks? I have no idea. I apologize for that one. Carrie? Lee? Uh, yeah, sorry. We, it's just we've got a lot of... They're, 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 pop, flying. they're, fighting, with, they're okay. fighting with each other and people are talking. That's why them. I don't look, folks, because I'll be going crazy. Especially. James Conner, Dom, I'm a 15-year recovering addict. I'm interested in speaking to kids. How do I get hooked up with you to do so? Um, email us at where do media at mafia roundtable.com media at mafia roundtable.com and then we'll further the discussion and then once we get ready to to proceed that we have speaking engagements which will come soon hopefully they come soon uh, we'll definitely uh, check your background out make sure everything you say is authentic and then move forward from there but thank you too thank you for trying to help next Christopher, I'm very, I'm very tied in with Union Local Seven and D. Oh, We're in New Jersey, Tile Marble Terrazzo. Yes, that's the union I was with, Tile Marble Terrazzo. Is Frank Williams still there, the in, union delegate? In in Philly, Jersey Five. Uh, Burroughs, N.D. Long Longshoreman. I'm Newark in Philly. I can help people get jobs. Okay, that's thank you. Summer. Just email us uh, mafiaroundtable.com. Also, let me know if Frank Williams is still the union delegate for Local 7. James O'Connor. Dom, do you think the gangsters are smarter today than back in the 20s and 30s? No, absolutely not. Because if they were smarter today, they would stop all the bullshit with their big bid rigging and all that stuff. Not worth it. Too much legitimate money. But then again, you do have a lot of mobsters that are just staying in the cut. They're not coming out. They don't want to be bothered. They have boatloads of money, and they don't want to do life in prison. Back in the 20s and 30s, I wish I grew up in that era. That's for sure. David Gallant. Dom, why do you think that the Bananos were so vicious as a family? Were those the traits you guys looked for? Um, looked for? That's a really good question. Um, I love a gangster. I love dealing with tough guys. Uh, like the Mickey Paradisios of the world, um, sitting down with him, 
easy, easy to sit down with somebody you know is a killer, somebody who's a thug. Even though I lost a lot of respect for him, a lot of the guys out there nowadays, they, you know, you want to call me a rat, but you have the rats running wild in your own city and you're accepting it, you're not chasing them? Come on, that's a disgrace to say you're a mobster. That's a hypocrite. But um, I love dealing with tough guys. I just, uh, I respect that. The next question. Uh, Donation. Thanks for your contribution, Mike. Dom, so thank you, Mike. Did you know Chubby Ma uh, Marino? Yes, I knew Chubby. Um, I didn't know him well, but always a smile on his face. Real nice guy. All right, this is another contribution from uh, Vintage Mr. J. Thanks, Vintage Mr. J. It says, thank you for your answer. What are, you, what are your top two or three examples of people in life who conducted themselves as the perfect example of a gangster? Uh, read that again. Top okay. two, you, you lost it. All right, what are the top two or three examples of people in the life who conducted themselves as the perfect example of a gangster? Top two or three, I would say Vinny. Um, just by never using cell phones on a pager system, many times, and don't get me wrong, when we used the pager system, we didn't get a burner phone to use the number. We went out and found the pay phone and then used it just for extra precaution. Rain, snow, sleet, hail, we did it. Plenty of times, three in the morning, brr, 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 come outside, walking with the umbrella or just walking in the snow, freezing, going back and forth. Uh, so I would say Vinny by far uh, in that sense. Um, that's so this was a follow up from my question earlier with Locke that you didn't, um, I, I think you didn't know. Bobby Hummer said fr um, Frankie Locke. I think he meant Frankie Locke. Or Loke. I think he meant Frank Locasio Gambino, yeah. father of Salvatore. Frankie Loke. Yeah. Fra Just a comment. I, I, Just... No, I heard wonderful things about him. Never met him. Uh, great, great, great guy. Great. Hands down, like one of the best. Not That's all I've ever heard. Very wonderful guy. So, But we never met. Never crossed paths. This is uh, from Mob Entertainment Group. It says, Dom, do you think the old school gangsters would have made it as long as many did? If they had the same aggressive FBI with Tech and Rico going at them like the uh, the 90s guys did? No, of course not. Uh, and I think one of the old ones was like uh, Akata, the big tuna. Uh, he had a run, unbelievable, far few in between get runs like that, uh, you know, with a slap on the wrist. But no, <clears throat> too much technology, too many informants out there. It's just not what it was. That's because people started making shit. I guess people would say, well, they made you, so you cooperate your shit. But um, it's just, um, it is what it is. You know, no, the life's changed. The world has changed. And uh, you have to change with the times. And that's what I did. I chose a different path changing. Paul Morgan, the story of Mike busting you out of the auto body business while he locked up was unbelievably treacherous. Shows how life is behind the screen. Behind the screens. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. It wasn't Mike, though, that busted me out. That was little Vinny. Um, you know, and then he sent, he had the nerve to send the father paperwork written down. All that he said, he threw $100,000 into the shop. This was a shop I was bringing before I got locked up. 10000 a week in cash. And two checks I was cutting to daughter's mother, son's mother. For like seventeen hundred dollars, I think thirteen to seventeen hundred, they were getting checks every single month. This went on for close to two years, year and a half, and all of a sudden I get locked up. He had to throw a hundred, hundred, hundred and fifty thousand into the shop. It was doing bad, but it's funny because when Quiet Dom sent his guy, who's in the business, he told Quiet Dom, "This shop is a gold mine. This is a cash cow." It's sad. They're in a million, about a million and a half dollars in debt. They fucking milked them. Milked them, drained it. So this came from a different family telling me this. Something I already knew. So, no, it's just disgusting. I get aggravated every time I think about it, but it is what it is. Uh, Dom, any inter interactions with Detroit got? 
with the Troy guys, why during your time, wealthiest wise guys by far. They are what Paul Castellano were to the street guys of the Gambinos. Okay, uh, Detroit guys, I ran into a few. Um, as far as if he asked the wealthiest uh, mob guys, I would say one of them would have to be Sally Avellino. Um, massive, massive wealth, definitely by far. Next question. Freddie, from Freddie. Dom, is it true that Ronnie G used to abuse a lot of the capos in other families? They swear... Um, I heard that Ronnie G was, um, I heard even in jail, he's just very uh, vocal. He'll tell them the way it is. And, you know, everybody's different. I, I would only abuse somebody verbally if um, I felt they were trying to take advantage or act like a jerk off. But I'm sure he's picking and choosing who's, who he's abusing because there's some capos out there that won't stand for it. But, you know, I've heard he, he's been abusive with his mouth. From Peter Cagnini, hi Dom. Do you know Ronnie Car Carlucci, aka Ronnie Mozzarella? No, I don't. And I might have ran into him, so no, I don't. I'm not off the top of my head. Lee? No, no Burger King there. <laughs> no. Right. Oh, it's McDonald's. No, I'm no, sorry. No, no. Oh, I got yeah, the finger. <laughs> Here's a fun question for your Bronx memories: Louie and Ernie's Pizzeria, or Cosby's Pizza back in the day. Uh, I would take Crosby Pizza back in the day. Back in the day, Crosby Pizza. And then when I came home from jail in 99, I would have to say Louis and Ernie's. But back in the 80s, uh, late 70s, early 80s, Crosby Pizza area by far. Next. Reels wants you to drop some names. He says, Dom, you said a few times about mob guys meeting with rats. Who are you talking about? Drop some names. Oh, they'll come out soon. I'll come out soon with them. I'm going to start blowing people up, literally, verbally, um, not uh, figuratively. But, um, no, there's, there's a lot of names. So um, we're going to start going with that, too. Uh, just want to say something here. Someone's saying that none of the emails get to you. Every email gets forwarded to you. Yes, you do, and I did respond. Did you get my responses to send out? Uh, no. Yes. So see. Yes. No. 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 Just no. 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 Don't no. Do that. So I thought you accidentally were sending them back. No, to I'm me. sending them back to you so you oh, could send them out. Yes, they were sent out. Okay, they you were... sent it, but you forwarded it. Yes, I did. Not with my direct email, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, you'll have everybody. Uh, I don't think so. Lee. Maybe. <laughs> I'll kidnap your pugs, Lee. <laughs> no. Listen, Lee has two little pugs. I told him he messes with me. He's gonna walk in his house one day and see a note. Your pugs are for ransom, and I'm going to just get ketchup, put on the paw, put the paw print like it's blood. He's going to have a bloody paw print out of ketchup on the thing, and it'll it freak fluff. out. This is a guy who feeds his dogs by hand. Oh, he's asking, where's Fluff Fluff? Oh, who? You're asking? Don't fuck with Fluff Fluff. That's my gangster cat. Uh huh. Don't worry, you have three pit bulls to get out of the house with Fluff Fluff. Good luck. I got some food on the wrong way. <laughs> Good. Next. Um, We're done. You want to wrap it up? Three more? Three John, more. How many viewers what? we have? What? 500. Oh, okay. Come on. We'll keep it going then. Guys, uh, subscribe, uh, please. I need help. Seven, what is it? 16,000. We're 300 away. Not even 280 away. Let's do it. Thank you. Come Hi, on. Dominic. I used to work as a busboy at Casablanca okay. in Maspeth. Any funny stories? Uh, yes, I do. Actually, when I first came home in 99, Vinny brings me there. Joe Messino is not there. Louis Restivo is there. And at the time, I think he had um, diabetes with his foot, so he's hobbling. Comes over, and Vinny introduced me. He didn't hear too well. And he hugs me. How have you been? It's good to see you. And I'm like, I'm mortified. Like, good to see me. I don't fucking know you. And But I, I played it off. I said, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. Well, you know, it's been many years, this and that. Just letting them talk. Then Vinny takes over right away the conversation. They go back. We leave. Vinny says, what the fuck was that about? I said, I don't know. The guy's fucking senile. 
Like, I don't know him. I never met him before in my life. And they started laughing. They said, and this is the type of guy Joe Messino had close to him. But um, God rest his soul. He passed away to uh, Louis. All right. And you said, do underbosses and consig- consigliaries have their own crews like captains? Uh, the underboss may have some guys with them, yes. Uh, consig- consigliere, no. As uh, no, they're neutral. They don't have. They're not supposed to have guys because they're. They're supposed to be neutral. Anytime there's a beef with two captains, you go to your consigliere to uh, for the dispute. They're supposed to consult, be there like just to advise in an advisory advisory position. But sometimes yes, on the bosses will have some crews. They might yeah. might not. Depends. All right, Freddie says. Uh... I wish Dom would get into detail. It's always a cliffhanger till next time. What we'll details? No, no, just in general. Oh, I think. Okay, you say. well, I have to keep some, you know, some suspense. Otherwise, you won't come back. Go ahead. But you'll, you'll elaborate on those stories on what? Oh, we'll elaborate. Time goes on. We're doing lives, and listen, we have plenty of time. Plenty. That's all we have is time. Unless I drop dead, then the secrets die with me. Uh, from Rome. Dom, your opinion on the Spilatro brothers? Spilatro. Spilatro brothers. I know they were a little bit before your time. Also, how often did a made guy raise his hand to another made guy? Uh, I'll I'll go backwards with that one. Raising his hands is unheard of. However, I did it with Gino Gillespie. I beat the shit out of him, um, and that was it. But I was I was given the green light to do so. It was either that or we were killing Gino. So that was the alternative. But that's very it's unheard of putting your hands on another made guy, especially if you know they're made. You're not supposed to. Uh, the Spilatros, heard they were out of control. I was with Nicky Calabrese in um, at a Chicago outfit. He was the one. Him and his brother Frank. I'm, I'm almost accurate that they're the ones that killed the Spilatros. Um, and they were very dangerous. Nikki, his brother, they had a dangerous crew. Um, they did put a lot of work in, but it's Dom, what it is. It's part of the life. What's your thoughts on Sal Vitale and Frank Coppa cooperating? Um, it's, it is what it is. You know, I cooperated, so how am I going to knock them? But I don't even think Vitale, ah, it's just disgusting. It really is because I'm not sure. I think Copa was the first one, and he wasn't even looking at much time. So, but to each his own, I guess. You know, like I said, I cooperate. So, this is what it is. Uh, Sal says, "Hey Dom, stop hawking all your businesses on people to buy, to buy, buy. Stick to some mob stories." Okay, well, we are telling mob stories. I'm answering mob questions, but you know, you have to plug everything in. Can't satisfy everybody in life. Next. They're still coming in? Uh, there's a few. Just uh, all right, let's do from, three more. From play, three more, we're wrapping it up. Dom, what's your thoughts on the guys from Arthur Avenue growing up? There was always the impression that the guys from Arthur Avenue are the ruffles. Um, the guys from Arthur Avenue, I didn't think they were the roughest or toughest. I liked Arthur Avenue's back in my day. There was a place called, and I don't know if it's still there, Title Brothers, where they had... Everything, the prosciutto, the salamis, the just all Italian food. And you go in there, I remember too, that chocolate blocks, I mean, big blocks thick. You would break it with um, like a mallet or a, a big uh, a scissor that would come down. Not a scissor, um, a chopper. Come down to chop it, and oh, you could put it a piece in your mouth. You couldn't even bite through it. You have to just suck on it and have to melt. That's how thick the chocolate was. This is a good question from Cornbread. Dom, take us. Um, sorry, take us. What goes through your mind once under indictments? Explain the tension. Uh, tensions is like, oh fuck, here we go again, and then you're sitting in a cell. I had a lot of tension when I was locked up on the last one because of the Sam's Act. I didn't. I had zero clue. So that was stressful. I couldn't call a lawyer. I couldn't call my family. Um, it was just impossible. But um, on an average, 
you know, I deal with it. You just have to deal with it. You look over the case, uh, see what they're charging you with, sit with the lawyers, go over everything, and then just um, start adjusting your lifestyle. I would say the first month is the most difficult because you're acclimating into the jail environment, getting into a routine where you start playing cards, hanging out, reading. And then once you're in that routine, it just goes by much quicker. Um, this is from Rome. Dom, does New York pull rank over any other family other states. In Phil Lukinsky's Lu book, I pronounced it wrong, I'm sorry. He says, little Nikki claimed all decisions regarding other families in other states were made by New York. Uh, New York is the powerhouse for the mafia. That, that's it. You have the five families. That's where the strength is. Um, you know, but <clears throat> I would never underestimate any other family. I would never underestimate any other individual because you have a lot of sharp guys out there that could take you out. One more. Yeah, here's one more for you. Um, it is, uh, sorry, we just lost it here. What's it like for uh, a made guy who can't make a dollar? And that's from Cornbread. Uh, it's difficult from what I saw. You know, people struggling to make money. And I was fortunate enough I wasn't one of them. But I would always try to help somebody out, a fellow guy on the streets. Um, just it is what it is. Sometimes people can get it their own way. So please, people, also follow us TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I don't even know if we're on Twitter. Facebook, um, all the social media platforms we're on. Some of them on uh, t TikTok, I think. Yeah, TikTok went viral. So we have a lot of content out there. We're going to be putting more content out. Uh, go ahead, Kerry. You have another one. All right. So this is for everybody that's listening. So we're here to answer all the questions. Good, bad, endeavor. Um, but on another note, Never. don't take personal j jabs at anybody on the staff, Dom's or, wife, or say? anything. Um, this just, guy, tell, this, just tell me. I want. I want you straight it. out. Say this yeah. is for everybody. Okay. It's, Carrie, it's a let her, could, would you tell me what you said? Um, so you have Mr. Doug. Who? Why can't your wife answer real questions? He's cheated on you. He's letting me know that you've cheated on me. How many times you've cheated on me? It's out there. You hit me. Um, everything. Yeah, you have cheated That's on not... me. You know who you've been cheating on me with? Fluff. fluff. <laughs> 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 She's okay. right about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's where I have my problem. But I guess this guy's got... No, let him say that. And you know what? Grab the IP and see where he's coming from. See if we can find yeah, out who that, he is. Uh, no, 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 no. That's good. That's good. That. Because I want to see if it's uh, somebody else with... The other things that's going on. But that's, with, that's a great question. No, everybody. but that's good. I'm glad you come up with that. Let me answer. I'll answer that. I'm home every night. This ain't Dominic of the past. By 5, 6 o'clock, I'm home. I don't go out with the guys anymore. This ain't Dominic of the old. So I'm secure myself. And I'm not like that uh, little horn dog that used to run around. Those, those, my libido, whoop, way down, 56 years old. So I'm okay. Comfortable with myself. Comfortable with my relationship. It wakes Terry up every day at 5.30 in the morning. Because uh, I'm up at 3 a.m. every morning. But my wife is right. My fluff fluff is my baby. And before that was Maya, before she passed away. It was like, this dog was, oh my God, ridiculous. But, um, okay. So thank you for being an asshole. So, and that's it. So. That's right. All right. Well, everybody, thank you once again. All your listeners out there, please hit the subscribe button. Greatly appreciated. L thank you for all the contributions today. Thank you so much. And we'll continue to put out good content. We're going to be doing other platforms. I'm sure we'll have other people on. I'll be going on their shows. I have a lot of stuff in the works with people. Uh, we'll be announcing maybe next week. I'm going to see if it's okay with a gentleman that uh, invited me somewhere. So we'll see if uh, it's okay to start announcing and just um, hopefully we'll be doing tours and I would like to do them with some of my colleagues. Uh, when Gene gets home, he has a home here. Um, you know, if he goes with John, I wish him the best. Daylight's a great guy. They had a good combination together. So I would just wish everybody the best out there. Remember, egvodka.com, go there. Buy your vodka. You will not be disappointed. Trust me, you won't. And we'll have a subscription, too, with that. Everybody, much love and respect. Have a good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Peace out until next week.